Washington scientists are conducting an emergency survey of an unprecedented toxic algae bloom in the Pacific. The bloom is so big, it extends from Southern California to Alaska. In this video that may be difficult to watch, King 5's Allison Morrow shows us how it's affecting marine life in ways never seen before. The untrained eye might wonder what's wrong with this sea lion. The video was taken a few weeks ago near Long Beach. A sea lion with his head arched back and bobbing, he's basically having seizures. Vera Trainer knows the reason for the seizures. It's in their lab refrigerator at NOAA's Northwest Fisheries Science Center. There's long chains of different species in here. They're most concerned about that white one. This guy here. It's an algae called Pseudonychia. Each one of these are individual cells and they're joined. Each cell is microscopic, but with millions together on Washington's coast, they're massively destructive. So we're seeing effects on the marine ecosystem that we haven't seen before. The bloom is unprecedented in size, though invisible. It produces a toxin called domoic acid. It's already closed crab and razor clam fisheries. And now its effects are spreading to mammals. I think it's scary. I, you know, when we start seeing marine mammals suffering from these toxins, they're not that far in the food chain from us. NOAA's fisheries scientists have deployed to study it. They're on a ship looking for where the toxic cells are, just how toxic, and what's feeding their growth. With the information, they suspect they may not be able to stop the algae altogether. But we're able to figure out how to live with them. Test of this sea lion showed high levels of domoic acid. It's the first recorded in Washington to react like this. And researchers know it won't be the last. This is just one animal that was found on the beach. You wonder what other animals that are not on the beach is what's happening to them. In Seattle, Allison Morrow, King 5 News. You idiot. You naive, foolish, irresponsible nincompoop. There is really no description of stupidity, no matter how vivid, that is adequate. I quake at the imbecility of it all. Japanese government officials say they will help people meet. They've released a report that shows most unmarried adults are having a hard time meeting prospective partners. So to help bolster declining birth rate, they plan to support local governments in their efforts to hold matchmaking events. In a white paper on the nation's declining birth rate, men and women in their 20s and 30s were asked about their views on marriage and having children. Just over 54% of the respondents said it's better to get married if possible. 14% said people should definitely get married. 29% said people don't really need to get married. And fewer than 2% said marriage is not necessary. Those who said it's better to get married is suit at around 72% of the men and just over 65% of the women. Unmarried men and women not in a relationship were asked why. More than 55% said they simply don't have opportunities to meet people of the opposite sex. And 34% said they aren't attractive enough. I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, are, that, that people are exposed to originally from the weapons fallout, uh, and not the global atmospheric mm -hmm. testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this, this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident and this is quite terrible and in, any, in many ways it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born and some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted uh, 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 you know, um, 
uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born. So the, the birth rate will fall. Uh, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the, the data has been showing that, um, that the birth rate, uh, that, the, that the, 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 the sperm count in men has, has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago which showed that Israeli men had, had very low sperm count and that over the previous 10 years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate, by the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile and the Israelis would, would have no more children. It's as bad as that. It's as bad as that. And we are so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. There were massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military um, invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S., the, the, the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah uh, and mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and this study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is almost certainly the cause of the congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with, in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're bought. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on, but in the West, they probably find these things and they're bought them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environmental exposure to uranium. That's the point. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of two, uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of with fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium. And are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, uh, 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go come. away. What, 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 what Alexei says is true. It doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like th throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children, and they pass it on to their children, and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who work for the British Army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s. And uh, I studied their children and their grandchildren. And what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations. But the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations. So the normal genetic idea that you, you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong, and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the, of the nuclear war, all the, we, we just have radiation-resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay. Because you've imprinted something on the human genome, which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to welcome you to this International Conference on Management of Spent Fuel from Nuclear Power Reactors. Spent fuel management is an essential component of the nuclear fuel cycle. Supporting the safe management of spent fuel and of radioactive waste is the key IAEA activity. 
we develop safety standards and guidance, publish technical reports, and organize technical courses, workshops, and technical meetings. Last September, we devoted our annual scientific forum to the subject of radioactive waste management. We are organizing an international conference on the same subject in 2016. Waste disposal is often cited as one of the major problems facing nuclear power. In fact, the nuclear industry has been managing waste disposal for more than half a century. Dozens of facilities for low level and intermediate level nuclear waste are in operation throughout the world. As far as uh, the management of high level radioactive waste and spent fuel is concerned, good progress has been made in recent years, especially in Finland, Sweden, and France. I have had an opportunity to visit the Onkalo facility in Finland, where a repository for the final disposal of spent fuel is, viewing, is being built deep underground and on the hard rock laboratory in Sweden. They are impressive sites. I was also impressed by the briefing on the Seagull project, which I received from the head of a French National Radioactive Waste Management Agency, or ANDRA, during my recent visit to France. I understand that it is now at the license application stage. It will still be some years before the first deep geological repositories for nuclear spent fuel become operational. But the progress made, being made in this area deserves to be better known. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, since your last meeting five years ago, the most important event in the nuclear sector was on the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan in March 2011. Last week, I presented the IAEA report on the accident to our Board of Governors. Extensive efforts have been made throughout the world in the last four years to improve safety at nuclear power plants and at facilities housing nuclear material. I know that those of you working with the nuclear fuel cycle have extensively reviewed the practices and procedures since the accident <coughs> and taken additional steps to improve safety. This includes improving transparency and the exchange of information between countries. Conferences such as this have an important role to play. Despite the Fukushima Daiichi accident, many countries continue to see an important role for nuclear power as part of their energy mix. They believe that nuclear power can help to improve energy security, mitigate the effect of climate change, and make economies more competitive. IAEA projections indicate that the use of nuclear power throughout the world will continue to grow in the coming decades. The volume of spent fuel will also continue to grow, and it is therefore essential that it is managed safely. Since the last conference, the IAEA has launched a program to demonstrate the long-term performance of dry stored spent fuel and related storage system components. We are also finalizing the new guidance document on the use of dual purpose casks for both transport and storage. In 2012, we published a new safety guide on the storage of spent nuclear fuel. It is being revised uh, to take into account the lessons learned from the Fukushima Daiichi accident. As you may know, the IAEA provides extensive support to countries which are considering or embarking upon nuclear power program. 
One of the points which I stress in my meetings with uh, leaders from these newcomer countries is the vital importance of having cradle to grave plans in place for both spent fuel and radioactive waste. <laughs> I strongly encourage countries with existing nuclear power programs and experience of uh, the back end of the fuel cycle to share their experience with newcomer countries to ensure that best practice is implemented everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, the subtitle of your conference is an integrated approach to the back end of the fuel cycle. The IAEA considers it important for practitioners to take a holistic approach to the fuel cycle and remain aware of issues outside their particular specialty. I wish you every success with the important conference and I look forward to learning about the outcome. Thank you very much. As you look back over this whole thing, what's your biggest regret? Coming up, he is a child. You did this with a child. Stupid is not a big enough word to describe what you've done here. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I'm running from my captors Racing down side streets Through subway stations And I'm tired Should I turn and face him? Why is it me thereafter? to the wall because we know they're out to get us after all will I lose you this time in the crowd or in the alley will I lose you Spaces and search lights overhead. Welcome to my world where we sleep lightly, our backs are to the wall. Because we know they're out to get us after all. Thank you.